Because we live in a system that Sheldon Wollen calls inverted totalitarianism. It's a system where corporate power has seized all of the levers of control. There is no way to vote against the interests of Goldman Sachs or ExxonMobil or Raytheon. Uh, there, we've lost our privacy. We've seen under Obama an assault against civil liberties that has outstripped what George W. Bush carried out. Uh, we've seen the executive branch misinterpret the 2001 authorization to use Military Force Act as giving itself the right to assassinate American citizens, including children. I speak of Anwar Alaki's 16-year-old son. Uh, we have uh, bailed out the banks, pushed through programs of austerity. This has been a bipartisan effort because they've both been captured by corporate power. We have undergone what John Ralston saw correctly, calls a corporate coup d'etat in slow motion, and it's over. Uh, I just came back from Poland, which is a kind of case study of how neoliberal poison destroys a society and creates figures like Trump. Poland has gone I think we can argue a kind of into a neo-fascism. Uh, first, it dislocated the working class, deindustrialized the country. Then, in the name of austerity, it destroyed uh, public institutions, education, public broadcasting, and then it poisoned the political system. And we are now watching in Poland them create a thirty to forty thousand armed militia. Uh, you know, they they have an army. Uh, the, the parliament, nothing works. And I think that this political system in the United States has seized up in exactly the same form. So is Re Trump a repugnant personality? Yes, although I would argue that in terms of megalomania and narcissism, uh, Hillary Clinton is not far behind. Um, but the point is we've got to break away from, which is exactly the narrative they want us to focus on. We've got to break away from political personalities and understand and examine and critique the structures of power. Uh, and in fact, the Democratic Party, especially beginning under Bill Clinton, uh, has carried water for corporate entities as assiduously as the Republican Party. Uh, and this is something that Ralph Nader understood long before the rest of us. Uh, and stepped out very courageously in 2000. Uh, and I think we will look back on that period and find Ralph to be an amazingly prophetic figure. Nobody understands corporate power better than Ralph. Uh, and I think now people have caught up with Ralph. Uh, and this is, of course, why I support Dr. Stein and the Green Party. Uh, we have to remember that 10 years ago, Cereza, which controls the Greek government, was polling at exactly the same spot that the Green Party is polling now, about 4%. Uh, we've got to break out of this uh, idea that we can create uh, systematic change within a particular election cycle. We've got to be willing to step out into the political wilderness, perhaps for a decade. Uh, but on the issues of climate change, on the issue of uh, the destruction of civil liberties, including our right to privacy, and I speak as a former investigative journalist, which doesn't exist anymore because of wholesale government surveillance. We have no ability except for hackers. I mean, this whole debate over the WikiLeaks uh, is insane. Did Russia... I've, I've printed uh, classified material that was given to me by the Mossad. Um, but I never exposed that Mossad gave it to me. Is what was published true or untrue? And the fact is, the, you know, in those long emails, you should read them. They're appalling, including calling Dr. Cornell West trash. Um, it, it, it is the, the, the whole, uh, it, it exposes the way the system was rigged within, I'm talking about the Democratic Party, the denial of independence, the superdelegates, the stealing of the caucus in Nevada, the huge amounts of corporate money and super PACs that flowed into the Clinton campaign. The fact is Clinton has a track record and it's one that has abandoned children. I mean, she and her husband destroyed welfare as we know it and 70% of the original recipients were children. This, this debate over, I, I don't like Trump, but tr Trump is not the phenomenon. Trump is responding to a phenomenon created by neoliberalism and it, we may get rid of Trump but we will get something even more vile, maybe Ted Cruz. I've written that liberals are tolerated by the capitalist elites uh, because they do not question the virtues of corporate capitalism, only its excesses, uh, and call for tepid and ineffectual reforms. Uh, would, could that have also have been said of uh, FDR in the, in the, in the 1930s? Because uh, you were one of the uh, folks who did not back Bernie Sanders from the beginning. So you've, uh, well, I didn't back Bernie Sanders because 
and Shama Salwan and I had had a discussion with him before because he said that he would work within the democratic structures and support the nominee. Uh, and uh, I think we have now watched Bernie Sanders um, walk away from his political moment. Uh, you know, he, uh, I think he will come to deeply regret what he has done. Um, he has betrayed these people who believed in this political revolution. We heard the same kind of rhetoric, by the way, in 2008 around Obama. A political campaign raises consciousness, but it's not a movement. And what we are seeing now is furious spin. Uh, I listened to Ben Jealous just do it from the self-identified liberal class. And they are tolerated within a capitalist system because in a moment like this, they are used to speak uh, to people to get them to betray their own interests in the name of fear. And I admire Robert and have read much of his stuff and like his stuff, but if you listen to what he's been saying, the, the message is the same message of the Trump campaign, and that is fear. And that is all the Democrats have to offer now, and all the Republicans have to offer now. And the fact is, from climate change alone, we have no time left. I have four children. The future of my children, by the day, is being destroyed because of the fact that the fossil fuel industry, along with the animal agriculture industry, which is also as important in terms of climate change, are destroying the ecosystem on which we depend for life, and neither party has any well, intention to do anything about it. What should Bernie Sanders have done? Bernie Sanders should have walked out and run as an independent. Uh, and defied take, the Democratic Party. Take up the invitation of Dr. Jill yes. Stein and run she on the ticket. She offered to let him run on the top of the ticket. Yeah, that's what he should have done. And the fact is, you know, let's not forget that Bernie has a very checkered past. He campaigned for Clinton in 92. He campaigned for Clinton again in 96, after NAFTA, the greatest betrayal of the working class in this country since the Taft-Hartley Act of 1948, after the destruction of welfare, after the omnibus crime bill that exploded the prison population, and, uh, you know, we now have, I mean, it's just a monstrosity what we've done. 350,000 to 400,000 people in our, locked in cages in this country are severely mentally ill. Half of them never committed a violent crime. That's all Bill Clinton. And yet he went out and campaigned. In 2004, he called on Nader not to run, to step down, so we could support a war candidate like John Kerry. And I'm listening to Jealous before talk about the Iraq war. 60% of the Democratic senators voted for the war, including Hillary Clinton. The idea that somehow Democrats don't push us into war defies American history. I think we have to acknowledge two facts. We do not live in a functioning democracy and we have to stop pretending that we do. Um, you can't talk about when you eviscerate privacy, uh, you can't use the word liberty. That is the relationship between a master and a slave. Where do you feel this massive movement that has developed over the last few years, this people movement, would have a better opportunity to grow? Well, under a let's Trump let's presidency or under a Clinton presidency? Assuming that one of those two will eventually be, be, uh, uh, be elected. I, I, I don't think it makes any difference. Um, the TPP is going to go through whether it's Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Uh, endless war is going to be continued whether it's Trump or Clinton. Uh, we're not going to get our privacy back whether it's under uh, Clinton or, or Trump. Um, the idea that, that, the, that at this point the figure in the executive branch exercises that much power given the power of the war industry and Wall Street is a myth.